بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عن uh, we're on hadith number 28 from the book of Riyal al-Salihin in the chapter of patience عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال لما ثقل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جعل يتغشاه فقالت فاطمة رضي الله عنها وكرب آباه فقال ليس على أبيك كرب بعد اليوم فلما مات قالت يا أبتا أجاب رب دعاء يا أبتا من جنة في الدوس مأوى يا أبتا إلى جبريل ننعاه فلما دفن قالت فاطمة عليها السلام يا أنس أطابت أنفسكم أن تحثوا على رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم التراب رواه البخاري. Uh, in this hadith narrated by Anas, may Allah be pleased with them, um, about the Prophet وسلم, when he was in his last illness, uh, basically on the deathbed, and he became, you know, uh, it became very hard upon him. He fell into unconsciousness, you know, back and forth. And his daughter Fatima, anha, she was saying, like, oh, the suffering of my dear father. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that there will be no suffering for your father after today. And then when the Prophet ﷺ, he passed away, uh, she said, you know, alas, my father, Allah has called you back and you've responded to his call. Oh, father, the garden of Jannah is your abode. The garden of paradise is your abode. Uh, oh, my father, we give the tidings to Jibril of your death. Uh, and then when he was buried, she said, May Allah have mercy upon her and uh, peace be upon her. Uh, how are your hearts reconciled when you have to put the dirt or the earth over Allah's Messenger? Wasallam? And this is narrated by Al Bukhari. Um, in this hadith, uh, we see how uh, the the patience isn't necessarily mentioned, the word patience isn't mentioned in it, but the whole situation is a lesson in patience. The first lesson is the patience of our Prophet ﷺ, how he was facing uh, the pains of death, and we know that the NBA, the Prophets of Allah, they actually have multiple times the pain that a normal person goes through. And the pain was so bad that he actually would fall unconscious ﷺ, but he was bearing the pain. And he was still giving advice in his deathbed. You know, prior to this, there are other hadith showing that he was saying, encouraging us about the salah, um, encouraging us to be kind to our family. Um, up until the last moment of his death, he was giving us advice. And here, very close to the death, he still is not complaining. And even though her, his daughter, Anha Fatima, you know, she was very sad to see not only her beloved father, but the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, suffering and it caused her to be saddened and suffer as well. Um, so this also is a test in patience for her, right? In both situations. Uh, it's teaching us that regardless of who we are, we're going to go through tests. If the Messenger وسلم, who was the best of humanity and the final Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will go through tests, so will we. Allah says, حَتَّى مِنْكُمْ that we will um, test you until we know who is uh, a mujahid or struck one who strives in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and we will know who is the uh, patient ones. So life is a test to test us to see those who are patient. Um, also the Prophet he was given the choice you know, to have a prolonged life um, and he chose to go with Allah. He was saying in his breath, uh, to the uh, highest of companions, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew it was his time and he wanted to go back to his creator and to his Lord. Uh, so he was patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Also, it's teaching us that, you know, the Prophet is human as well. And, you know, he ate, he drank, he slept, and he went through death. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa innahum thumma innakum qiyamati anda rabbikum takhtasimun. That verily to the Prophet ﷺ, you are going to die, you're going to pass away, and they will pass away, and then you will come back to your Lord, 
on the day of resurrection to settle the disputes. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us and teaching us that the Prophet وسلم, yes, he is the best of humanity, yes, he is the Prophet and Messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, but he is also a human being who will go through the trials and tribulations that a human being goes through. And this is a hikmah for us because if the prophets and messengers were, you know, superhuman, we don't have a relatable um, role model to aspire to be like, right? We would say that, oh, they're prophets or messengers. But Allah is showing us that they are humans as well, so they have to go through the same struggles that we go through, but they are given the gift of revelation. And it shows also the love of Fatima radiallahu anha for her father, and he didn't want to see him suffer, right, obviously. And when he passed away, she made the statement that he is answering the call of his Lord. Like he was responding to going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even though she was saddened by the departure of her father, she didn't allow it to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to excessively grieve to the point where it takes her into sinfulness. She was patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she knew the time of Muhammad, of her father, uh, was passing away, um, decreed by Allah. And actually, there's a story that she came um, to visit the Prophet ﷺ previously, and he would always get up when she came and let her sit, and he would sit her right next to him because of his love, ﷺ, for his daughter Fatima. Um, and he whispered something to her, and uh, she started uh, crying basically. And then he whispered something else and she started laughing. But she didn't tell anybody of what had happened until after the Prophet ﷺ had passed away. And she explained that the Prophet told her he will be departing this dunya soon, which made her sad. And then he said, but you will be one of the first to join me. And that's what made her happy, ﷺ. So he knew uh, his time was coming soon. Not exactly when, but it was coming soon. And he gave these uh, tidies to his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha. Um, also, uh, it shows that you know, even if you're a high status and a you know, mu'min believer, it's okay to be saddened uh, by the loss of a loved one. And this is expressed when Fatima, she asked the companions, you know, are you pleased or are your hearts reconciled that you're putting the dirt over the messenger of Allah? And of course, she knows that the Sahaba, عنهم, they would give their lives for the Prophet ﷺ. They would give everything they possessed for the Prophet ﷺ. Um, but it's just at that moment, the sadness of her heart, you know, she couldn't take it basically. So she expressed these words uh, to remind her or remind them and herself that, you know, the beloved is being buried. Wasallam, And even though you know, it was difficult for her, it was something that had to be done. And it was difficult for the companions, but it had to be done. Uh, so this is showing us the patience, um, like we said, for the Prophet ﷺ in his deathbed, even towards the end, and all the suffering he was going through, he was concerned for the ummah, and he never gave up spreading the deen and giving da'wah and giving the good tidings. And also the patience of his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha, and seeing her father pass away in front of her, and also the patience of the companions in burying the Prophet ﷺ. You know, this was one of the greatest catastrophes of the Ummah, the loss of the Prophet ﷺ. And many of them were very saddened, and some of them were even to the point of disbelief. But at the end of the day, they knew that, they knew that this was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they were pleased with Allah's decree. Um, many of them would say the statement that, we know the Prophet ﷺ was going to pass away, um, but what saddens us also is that the revelation is no more. When the Prophet ﷺ was there, he w they would still get revelation. They would still have their questions answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once the Prophet ﷺ had passed, then there was no more revelation. So that also increased their sadness. Um, and even for us, just reading the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ and seeing and studying you know, this moment of his passing, it usually should bring uh, tears to our eyes and make even our hearts uh, you know, saddened even after all this time because he is the beloved of the Ummah and our messenger and teacher 
وسلم, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us you know, the lessons in patience and to be patient even you know, when we go through our own loss of loved ones or friends or hardships, remember this situation and the loss of the Prophet وسلم, and that's what used to make the scholars and others uh, ease their suffering when they thought about this أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم استغفر الله الرحيم جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله